that does come about. Um, I think it's just. Yeah.
What's good? What's good? What's good? What's happening? Hey, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry, Merry Christmas, especially after the year we've had this year. <laughs> yes. Hey, I wanted to say thank you all for joining us this day after Christmas. It's been um, a different type year. You know, it's been a lot of ups. I don't know if it's been a lot of us, but it's been a lot of downs and a lot of challenging times, you know, emotionally, mentally, um, physically, you know, and what we want to do is kind of talk about the things that we kind of went through, how we um, pushed through it, how we failed through it, and then also talk about how we're going to approach 2021 in hopes mm -hmm. that it inspires you and gives you some tips on how you can plan out your year that's coming today i have with me three of the people that have been rocking with me since yeah. basically day one um <laughs> sorry many of you know them and if you don't after this interview you will um because they are an inspiration not just in the tech world but in my personal life and in others' lives as well. Um, so introducing first, we have CCIE. Oh, before that, I just want to kind of share this as well. When I first met this this the, this team, you know, they were all working at Cisco, and I just like had mad. Um, I admired them. I'm like, yo, like I feel like the odd guy out because all of y'all are working at Cisco and I'm sitting here like it was like a privilege just to be on the same stage with them. You know, they got CCIEs that doing big things. And as of October, I'm now at Cisco too. So you're looking at four members yeah. of Cisco that Yeah. Congrats, hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. They they yes. say they say, um, look at your friends and you you'll see where you'll be. So I guess that statement is true. You know what I mean? So thank you to Antonio, Erica, and Kelva for just inspiring me, encouraging me, helping me in everything that you've done since I've joined YouTube and met you all. Yeah. Yeah. So let me do some I'm introductions cute. for thank sure. You. Oh, yeah, appreciate much. it. Thank you. For sure. Let me let me do some introductions so I can shut up. Hey, we got CCIE, Mrs. Erica Cooper. What's good? What's up? What's good? How you doing? I'm great. Thank you. I'm great. All right. Then we got CCIE. My big homie. <laughs> Antonio McCarver. What's good, bro? What's good, family? Hey, welcome everyone. Glad to be here. Yeah, yeah. Welcome. We got security consultant extraordinaire. He's already a CCIE. He just don't have a paperwork yet. <laughs> when you get those numbers, come on across the pod, man. We'll celebrate. <laughs> My boy, Kelvin Charles. What's up, family? Yeah. yeah. What's, going on? What's going on? Thank you. Thanks for the introduction, man. I'm getting that CCIE real soon. So Absolutely. Absolutely. True story. The first round's on Antonio. <laughs> hey, I got it. You know what I'm saying? I work hard. I hustle hard. I got it. <laughs> that's with me you know i got it <laughs> oh okay okay look at you <laughs> i want to say um shout out to the moderators in the chat and everybody that's joining us so getting this thing kind of started can each of you kind of tell how your 2020 has been and who yeah, else go first um I, I'll go ahead and go. Uh, it has been, if I could sum it up in one word, it has been uh, humbling. Mm -hmm. uh, started the year off uh, for me when Kobe Bryant and Gianna and the rest of them passed away on that particular Sunday. Uh, mm -hmm. Things kind of shifted for me as a father, looking at the fact that I can't even imagine being in a situation where death is inevitable with my child. And everyone knows that I have four daughters. So for me, it's been humbling in the sense that what transpired after that has been nothing but pure chaos 
Mm-hmm. But on the on the flip side, though, because I am a man of great faith, it has also been encouraging because I'm still here. Uh, I'm at high risk uh, when it comes to fighting that deadly virus. So, you know, it has forced me to to walk in a level of faith that I've never had to walk in before. So for me, it's been humbling and I'm grateful for the opportunity to even have life right now. And, you know, there's, you know, there, there's folks that are still battling that virus. There's genocide going on over in Eritrea uh, with Ethiopia right now. And I know people that personally are dealing with the remnants of that. So for me to be here to talk to you guys and to talk to our friends that have joined us, uh, you know, uh, on, on the on the internet, I'm blessed and humbled, bro. Mm-hmm. Thank you, man. I think, I, I think for me, it's it's been, with everything that's going on in the world, there's, for me this year, there's been a lot of ups and downs. Um, I've had some good things happen. I mean, the birth of my little baby boy, who's now seven months old. That, that Congratulations. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. That, that, He's so kind of, <laughs> I mean, I'm biased, but he is. He's perfect. <laughs> um, you know, that that kind of brought a lot of joy to, to the family. You know, missed everything that's actually going on in the world right now. Um, so that one nice. Um, as I was saying to you guys, just before we started the stream, um, me and my fiance, we purchased our first home together uh, back in February. Thank you. Yeah, so that was something to look forward to. Um, we had to wait until we moved. We only moved in about a month ago or so now because of, of COVID. They, they had to stop building the, the house. Um, so that was something to, to keep looking forward to, uh, despite everything that's going on in the world. Um, and, you know, I just echoing kind of what Antonio said, although, you know, I'm not considered to be high risk uh, when we look at this COVID uh, virus. Um, you know, I'm just fortunate to to be healthy. I'm fortunate to have a family that are healthy. Um, and, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have not had um, the, the, the COVID um, virus as of yet and neither as you know many of my immediate family members so i hope that it stays that way um and and i just pray that you know in the in the coming year um you know covid is you know essentially a thing of a past or it's you know it becomes you know a, a past talk and it's it's not as relevant anymore because you know it's affected life for people in so many ways um you know people around me have been affected uh, with jobs um, and, and it's just not a nice situation, especially when you get to this time of the year, the festive period, and people are struggling to to provide for the families. Um, and I'm just really fortunate that I've not been in that position. So, you know, I'm really thankful uh, for that. Blessed. Yeah, for myself, it's been a struggle. It's been like what uh, Antonio talked about. Uh, you know, when we found out about Kobe, I, I, I mean, I admired Kobe. I'm from Chicago originally, uh, but I, I, you admire Michael Jordan, but like Kobe was, was, that was, that was, that touched home a lot. Uh, then dealing with the, the COVID, you know, uh, situation, it, it's just humbling. That's all I can tell you. It's humbling. You, you get things uh, kind of front and center with dealing with things, you know, things that are, that will impact you that you think you can kind of brush off but it's like oh that's not really a big thing and then you realize you you can't go anywhere you can't travel and then your relationships you start really really looking at your immediate relationships are they where they where you need to be you know uh do you have a solid you know foundation with your significant other or spouse uh i went through a major health scare you guys know about this Uh, my husband um you know he had a heart attack you know, uh, in September, like two days before, uh, you know, Labor Day. And it, it just, it was so, all the COVID things that were going on and, and everything else, it was like, you just got to deal with that. And so, you know, it's taught me to be humble, appreciate what I have, and don't take a lot of stuff for granted. Don't waste a lot of time. It's not, uh uh-uh. If, if you're not benefiting me or, or helping me or improving my situation or it's a, you know, what I call a multiplier effect, I will cut you short so quickly. And it's nothing personal. 
I just don't have time. Uh, you know, and I've, I've learned now, especially like not being able to travel uh, and, and, and everything. My, my husband's a high risk uh, because of the surgery, uh, because of his uh, health scare. And so now we just kind of hunker down and that's fine. I'm okay with that. I've gotten more uh, concrete with my relationships uh, this year. I, I've, you know, it's kind of like relationships matter more than the social media stuff or tweeting and Facebooking and everything else, you know, so that's more important. Uh, on the professional side, uh, I've been doing pretty good, you know, still in my domain uh, leadership uh, role as a technical lead within Cisco. Uh, it's, it's been challenging, but I've done more growth this year. And I, for that, I appreciate that. I, I really do. I really appreciate that because I've learned a lot more um, and I've got still room to go. So I'm definitely grateful for that. Yeah. Um, Erica, you're doing big things. You inspire me at Cisco. Um, appreciate that. To see I appreciate you that. as a black woman in a position that you're in and you're doing your thing, you know, that's, I salute you and you, I'm, I'm sure you inspire other black women to believe that they can do it too. So much respect. I appreciate that. Thank you. you. Yep, Thank you. For sure. All right. Um, I'm going to ask a question. A lot of people on social media often share their success, right? It's like, hey, I passed this certification. I worked hard to get it. I'm going to post it. I'm going to get likes. You know what I mean? That's, I got this bag. I just got this new job. Like everybody's posting the things that they were or are successful at. But what I want to ask you all is about that thing, that thing that you failed at or that thing that you've been grinding at and have not been able to accomplish. Um, what was that thing for you in 2020? Wow. Hmm. Kelvin, you want to start? You've been yeah, there. I can, I can start. Um, yeah. I, I think that's a very good question, actually. Yeah. Um, I think for me, I'm so used to grinding. I think when I stop or things become, or, or let's say I have a little bit more free time, I feel as though I'm not doing enough. So this year and the past year i've been working on my ccie security as you know um the start of this year the switch the version so that meant um well for me i i failed the written uh before the the, the version switch so version file five i failed the version um five about twice maybe the first time um i was about 10 points off so i, I was slightly gutted about that because i was so close to passing um, the second time for me, um, I actually ran out of time and it's the first time I've ever run out of time in an exam ever. I'm normally, I normally don't have any issues with time. So the CCIA security version five exam for me, it was really bugging me and I just couldn't get the, I, I just couldn't get some of the concepts and, and I work with this technology every day or at least most of it. Um, then the, the version six came along um, at the start of this year and I really decided to focus on the blueprint topics, focus on what it is that I work with every day because I do work in, in the security domain for, for Cisco. Um, so much so I actually printed out the, the blueprint. Normally I just take a look online and leave it as a tab open so I can refer to it. Printed it out. Um, I had highlighters, so I'd highlight topics that I'd covered. I'd read the content, I'd lab the content, then I'd go over any review questions that I had. Um, and I just really, really lost a bit of confidence in thinking that I'm, I'm just not going to pass this this written exam. And for me, the written exam, I believe, is a little bit more difficult than the lab exam for me, even though I've not done the lab yet. And the reason I say that is because when it comes to the theory-based stuff, I seem to have a little bit more trouble on that side. However, when it comes to actually labbing and, and just doing it, getting my hands dirty, I'm really good at that element. So it was one of those where I felt I just needed to get this theory element out of the way and then I could focus on the lab element. So back in, I don't even know when it was, but a couple of months ago, I would say I actually passed the the new version six CCIE, CCMP security written. So, um, you yeah, know, I really 
got to a point where I thought I'm never going to do it. And then I, I did it, you know, and I really focused on what it is, you know, it was tunnel vision and, 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 and I just got it done. So for me, that was probably something that was on my mind a lot for the, the past year and the year before that. And it was actually one of my goals, which, you know, we're going to talk about shortly. Um, and I just felt like I just, I just couldn't get it. And I'm, and I were working in that space. So it was quite frustrating for me. Um, but you know, it just shows if you if you work hard at it and you really focus on it, you, you can really achieve it. So, you know, I ended up pulling through in the end. Oh, yeah. Congrats, man! Congrats yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah, congratulations! And yeah, you gonna get those numbers. You definitely get those numbers. Someone else jump in, Kelvin. You you just said something that was really that just stood out to me. You said you had to deal with the loss of confidence. At some point, I want you to share with everyone, uh, and it, it don't have to be right now. But at some point, I would love for you to share with everyone. How do you bounce back and regain that confidence? True because style. I think that uh, that's key in order to be successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We could, we could. I mean, I can touch on that now if you want, or we could. Yeah, we can sure. Go ahead, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So for me, I've I've always, or at least when I first started in this industry, I started, you know, general networking, CCNA level, got my CCNA, etc. As you guys know already, and then I switched to the security domain uh, quite prematurely in 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 my IT career. So I've always had the, I've I've always felt like I've had to battle with imposter syndrome. Um, I've always struggled, and and yeah. I've always got something in the back of my head saying, you know. Do you really know your stuff? Are you really good enough? <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and for me, that's it's been a constant reminder of keep grinding, just keep going, keep going, keep going, learn, 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 learn. And I feel like that's where my mentality has come from because I don't want to be that person that feels like I don't know my things. And, and I know when I actually do my work, I carry out my role on a daily basis. I know that I actually do know my things. I'm doing the job. Yeah. Um, but I think the, the the challenging aspect of it is really telling yourself that you actually do know what you're doing. I think mm -hmm. that's that's the challenge and being confident in what you do, because if you let that get to you in a sense that yeah maybe I'm not good enough, you, you're you're gonna struggle. Honestly, uh, you know, I, I there's been some situations I've been in and I, and I've you know, maybe it's been a troubleshooting call that's lasted all day. And yeah. I, and I've been sat there on the other end of the call. Um, and I've told myself, am I really cut out for this? Am I good enough for this? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you've just got to stay strong. That That's what I do. Stay strong and say, you know what? I ain't got this far for, <laughs> for no reason. You know, there's a reason I'm here. And there's a reason why I'm being put in these positions and, and and being challenged the way I am. And it's because I'm being challenged to grow from what I already know. I'm yeah. being challenged to take that next step into that, that zone that's not necessarily a comfort zone, but will become the comfort zone once I've mastered it. So now I'm in that zone, let me focus on, on, on defeating that zone. And then let's move to the next step and challenge someone else. So for me, that's the way I tackle it. Just, just keep telling myself that, you know what? I am good enough and I'm not going to let this this get me down or I'm not going to let this defeat me. If I don't know something, I'll, I'll work until I make sure I know it. Simple. Right. Right. True story. Yeah. I mean, that's that's dope, man, because uh, I think everybody and even as CCIEs and, and certified people, I think we all have at some point uh, been, you know, experienced that imposter syndrome and it's how you face the challenge and then map your plan out of getting out getting your mindset out of thinking that way you're 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 here for a reason you're you know they call you a resident expert for security for a reason uh -huh. so i mean i've come to you with some stuff some questions on for me from a security perspective and you answered just like that it was no okay let's just try to research this on cisco.com or whatever or google it uh -huh. or something you just like hey this is what we need to do and it was just like you had it it wasn't a uh, let me hesitate and fumble and stumble. So yeah, it's it's just how you approach that uh, imposter syndrome. And, and, it, and, and, and I, I think that's a really good, you know, even little things like that, Erica. You know, when we've had those conversations, in in the mm -hmm. fact that you know you, you're saying that now, and it, it 
that even sticks where you're like, well, you know, I know my stuff, you know, people are mm -hmm. reaching out to me and asking me mm -hmm. and they're getting the solutions that they require. And sometimes that's, that's all it takes as well. You know, sometimes, you know, you keep telling yourself, but also use the people that are around you use your colleagues use your peers use your mentors use your family you know there's been times i've had to confide in my fiance and and say you know this is really getting me down i really can't fix this and all it takes is for somebody to say you can, you do, can do it you can do Honestly, it you can do it and and you you maybe step away from the computer for five ten minutes reevaluate a situation or even come back to it the next day with a fresh pair of eyes and then tackle through it and you'll find that you can actually yeah. get through it yeah. true story. that's true that's true yeah, yeah thanks for sharing that kelvin yeah cool and i think um for people that out there that are out there feeling like imposter syndrome is something they're going through or feeling like they're they don't know enough they can't accomplish a, a task to hear from someone like you to admit that you deal with the same thing and mm -hmm. i've dealt with the same thing and i know yeah you know, many of us have dealt with the same exact feeling, not mm -hmm. just at, let's say, the level you are now, but the level you are before that and the level before that. And the next level you'll go to, you'll still <laughs> feel that same right. feeling because it's about right. that growth. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. so true. That's so true. Um, go ahead, Erica. No, I was going to say, for me... So this year, um, I like for recently, I'm right now currently um, supporting a very high level severity one uh, case, uh, technical case within Cisco. Uh, it's got a lot of visibility uh, on that. And I've gone through that uh, imposter syndrome too, even recently, like right now, because it's like, okay, I know I'm supposed to be at the table, but like, you know, I, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, it's just because of the magnitude of the, the complex problem. It's like, okay, can I, can I deal with this as a domain lead? How, how am I going to fix this situation? And I went back to, and I'm telling you this because of what you just talked about, Calvin. Um, I went back to my mentor, like you said, depend upon your village, your, your, your people, your friends. I've gone to. Duan, I've gone to uh, Antonio, uh, like, hey, I, I, you know, I'm struggling over here. And, you know, I've, 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 got, I've grown accustomed to saying I'm struggling and not trying to power through this uh, because that's one of the things that I, I used to do. And it just, it would create a lot of, you know, problems on the back end. You know, you'd wind up missing things, um, you know, missing time, missing important functions because I'm trying to power through. I, I reached out to my mentor and he gave me some of the most valuable advice that I, and I'm going to share that with Dewan and your, your community. He was like, look, you don't have to be the smartest person in the room. You got to be able to figure out how you can go get the answer and you may not have the answer and that's okay. But if you can go figure out where to go get the answer, it's the best thing for you. What I did was I had to take a step back and I realized I was like, you know what? It's myself and this other gentleman were co-leading this project. I was like, I think it's now time to bring in our, our, you know, our uh, business unit and we need to explain the situation. And, and they came up with a, a viable solution to fix it. Now we got to test it out and everything else. But it was like between our group, it was like we had to kind of, you know, come together as a team. And I had to provide that leadership for that team. But it's also being a leader and then also knowing, okay, where and when to say, okay, I don't have the answer. I got to go outside of my current environment to get the answer. And that's where the dynamics, and it's, it's also facing the challenges of, um, you know, dealing with the imposter you know, syndrome. It was a tweet that uh, Dewan has shared, um, I think about a month ago. I forget, it's in his timeline, you can find it. But he was like, don't dim your light for anybody. I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, but it was like, don't dim your light. You're there for a reason. And that gave me a lot of energy because I was like, okay, yeah, I'm not going to minimize my voice. I'm here and I'm going to use that time now to, to exercise my voice. It may not come in the pretty package of what people are used to dealing with, but I'm going to give you a straightforward answer. And my answer is valuable because I, I bring a different level of experience to the table. 
And if you want cookie cutter, then don't bring me to the table because I'm not going to give you cookie cutter. I'm going to give you Erica's viewpoint, Erica's experience. And, you know, I'm going to bring it from a female perspective too. So, you know, I had to bring all of that and my, the guy that I'm co-leading, I never get it because he's, he came back to me right before the shutdown for Cisco. And he was like, you know what? We couldn't have been able to move this project to the point where we're at right now if you hadn't been there to call me out on, on things, to bring you know that level of um, trustworthy and integrity to the table. And if I'm, you see I'm about to walk off a cliff, you'll call me out on it. And I appreciate that. And that meant more to me. Now we're still fixing the issue, yes. I mean, we don't have it done, but it meant more to me for that than anything else. So that's all I can encourage you is just, is, is facing those, you know, how you face those odds and those uh, challenges. What's, what's your perseverance? What, is, what are you going to do to, to move yourself forward? That's how I, I get over imposter syndrome. It's relying on your, your village and uh, getting a plan in place. So. Yeah. Yeah, true. That, that, that village, you know, each one teach one is, is real. Yeah. True story. For me, uh, uh, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but for 2020, I haven't had any failures that I've, you know, no, I, I haven't experienced the uh, failures in my professional life. Uh, as a matter of fact, 2020 has been one of the best years of my professional life. In my personal life, uh, you know, I haven't had to experience failures there. Um, I, I've had challenges, sure, but no failures to speak of. So when I think about that question, Duan, uh, you know, I guess the biggest thing that I can, uh, I can come up with is that I've had lessons learned on uh, how to do things better, how to do things more efficient. Mm -hmm. I think the success that I've experienced was because I had smart goals, you know, specific, measurable, uh, attainable, relatable uh, time uh, with, with, a, with a time stamp to it uh, and just staying focused on that and, and really uh, staying focused on living a life professionally and personally of minimalism uh, instead of focusing on all of the external stuff I really this year started focusing internal mm -hmm. and that made a world of a difference for me yeah yeah you shared a lot of that with me and um it's been helpful because I know for myself I I I, I go big I think big you know and I, I want to do everything big and this year wasn't big like um, there's a lot of things I wanted to accomplish and I didn't. Now, it could say, be well, there's a million things going on, but I think for me, internally, I kind of felt myself, you know what I mean? Because mm. I think ultimately managing like my weight, getting that to where I want to be will align everything <clears throat> that I want to accomplish, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so that area, <clears throat> I focus so much on, excuse me, I focus so much on like my career, getting the bag, you know, making sure my family good, making sure my friends is good, making sure everybody's good. And then sometimes I got to sit with myself and realize that I'm not good. And I don't know how to say I'm not good. I just yeah. know how to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I mm -hmm. really believe that um, at the end of the day, it's about the work as a man you really can't complain nobody really wants to hear it you know that's the way the world's kind of been defined and so i'm really trying to learn to have that i guess self-care you know what i mean what is that you know just trying to figure out all right yeah you're gonna get the bag the bag is gonna come it, i mean as long as you put in that work and be consistent in that the bag is gonna be there yeah your kids the, they need help, but a lot of things that they can do that for themselves, you know, you got to make sure that you're teaching them the things and the right things so they can think for themselves and learn and take risks and not be afraid. And then when they have that imposter syndrome, they know how to work through it and deal with it and know what it is rather than thinking that they're not good enough. You know what I mean? So yeah. just doing a lot of self-reflecting, like Antonio said, and learning how to do that at this stage of my life, because when I was younger, you know, I'm moving 100 miles per hour, but this year really caused me to just sit still and be like, wait a minute, something ain't right internally. I need to focus on healing this and doing this and 
getting where I really want to be. So that way, when I really want to make these moves or when I really want to accomplish this, I got myself right mentally to be able to handle it. You know what I mean? Right. And that's just being 100% right. transparent. You know, real quick, one of the things that you just said, you know, you had, uh, like, for your standards that you set for yourself, you know, you had so much more that you wanted to accomplish. Uh, but I can I can tell you this, that you've accomplished more in these 12 months almost than, you know, a great percentage of people can. And that's a testament to who you really are. And I'll never forget, you know, as we talk about the bag, you told me one day, Tone, don't forget you are the bag. So, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, in, 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 all I, in all of our getting, get understanding and understand that while you're trying to get to the bag, remember what the bag is and who the bag is. Each and every one of you listening, y'all are the bag. Perfect that. You know, right. add some add some protein and some muscle, some muscle mass to that. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's that's get brolic with it because you are the bag. Yo, kind of reflecting on the beginning of the year, um, Kobe passing away was really um, made me do a lot of self reflection. And the reason why I say that is like throughout Kobe's career, I wasn't a Kobe fan. Like I'm a Brown fan, I'm a Jordan fan, and I like Shaq. You know what I mean? And when it came to Kobe, I'm just like, man, whatever, man. Kobe's selfish. Mm. You know, I was a Tracy McGrady wow. fan. Tracy McGrady better than Kobe. But then, wow. you know, it came a time where it's like, yo, Kobe puts in that work and Kobe's that guy. And this probably was like the, his retirement year when I really started paying attention. And then he goes to hit like 60 in his last game. 60 in the end. Yeah, yeah. and it was like, yo, Kobe really put in the work. And despite what everybody said about him, he was focused on his work. And that mm -hmm. the end of his life, when it was all said and done, his work is what defined him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It wasn't his selfishness that people thought it was. No, he was such so selfish. I mean, focused on internal and accomplishing the things that he wanted to accomplish that it didn't matter what people said or what people thought. He wanted to win. You know what I mean? And I think ultimately that's where I want to be in my life. Like, it don't matter what people say. It don't matter how many likes you get. It don't matter how many shares you get. It don't matter how many followers you got. You know, that stuff don't matter. It's about the work that you, you set out to do. And then once you set out to do that work, you are consistent and focused on the work and not on those distractions. So that's my 2021 is not even worried about the distractions pretty much. It's kind of setting the tone for that. Yeah, yeah absolutely, man. And yeah. you know, like you, a huge LBJ fan. I'm not a Jordan fan at all. Uh, I'm from Detroit, so you know there's that. Uh, I didn't appreciate Kobe until I started understanding Mamba mentality. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when I started appreciating. That's why it, it hurt so deeply when he passed. That and the fact that his daughter was with him. That that I, I still struggle with that yep. as a father, uh, but just also as a father of girls. Like I can't. My job is to protect them, and it's just like whoa. But, you know, that Mamba mentality, man. And I think it's that reason, bro, why this year has gone for me like it has. You know, I've had ups and downs, but, you know, that Mamba focus mentality, you know, I keep tweeting out 10,000 hours. That's where it's coming from, that Mamba mentality. I need to, what I'm trying to do now is going to be directly correlated to that mentality. Yeah. One thing that you guys are not realizing is that, yeah, Kobe, Kobe was, you know, I didn't really appreciate Kobe either until uh, midstream, midway after Jordan retired, it was like, okay, then, you know, who's the next one to pick up the mantle? I, you know, LeBron James, I'm starting to really embrace him now, but Kobe was, was like my guy after it was like a really good ending between Jordan and to where we're at right now. Uh, Kobe's work ethic was just phenomenal. I mean, like I saw him, uh, this video clip of him shooting in the, um, doing practice shots, I think it was after a game or he wanted to, this is right before a game. And I mean, he was just drenched in sweat, the front shirt, front side of his shirt, sweat, backside, everything. And when this trainer got there to say, okay, we're going to train a little bit, he had already put up like two or three, maybe 400 shots, just working on his craft. Uh, but the thing that, that impressed me the most about Kobe, which is where I really appreciated 
what he brought to the table was look at how he impacted the women's game. He was an ambassador to the women's game, period. He'd take his daughters there, both Gianna and uh, um, Natalia, uh, both his daughters there to the games, the WNBA games. Uh, anytime that they needed a sponsor per se, Kobe was right there. He was right there. And that to me was, you're leaving your legacy, but also you're imp impacting the community as a community. Your ability to give yourself and say, you know what, if I as a man can sit there and embrace a, a, you know, women's, what they're doing, it's going to bring up the sport and bring up the, the you know, bring up the community and, and, and introduce a whole people, a whole generation of people that follow me and introduce them to the women's game. I love that. And I said, you know what? The only other player that I see that right now doing that is who? LeBron James. You see him out there saying, okay, at the end of his season, he's probably in rest mode. And it said what he's doing is he's going to WNBA games. And this isn't a pl you know, plug in to WNBA games, but that was to me the most significant thing. And that's why I gained a lot of respect for Kobe. So. Here's a question. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about Kobe, the Mamba mentality, work, work ethic. Do you apply that to your technical career? I do. I do. How important is um, the work ethic in the journey of tech? When I, okay, so when I studied for a certification or I study, forget about the certification, let's take that off the table. Let's say you want to look at a different uh, technology. You have to really get into it. For example, when I started learning ACI, the very first thing I did was I pulled out um, the ACI uh, design blueprint. And I went through that and I said, okay, I've got to figure out how I'm going to set up my own lab at that point. And so you have to really get into it and you have to put in the work. When you put in the work, you're setting up your, 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 your almost your path for how you're going to play, be placed on down the road. You've already got the foundation. So now that you've, you know, picked up, let's say ACI or Cloud Center or whatever, you've gone through and you've, you know that not only from a high level, you know, like I know about the technology, but you know about the ins and outs of how routing protocols or how, you know, layer two, layer three works or how an application fits within that particular uh, protocol, uh, with, with, within that particular technology. You're setting that up for when you get a call from your manager, maybe a year down the road and say, hey, can you take on this high level project uh, for me? Because uh, we've got this, you know, customer that's, you know, threatening to do X, Y, Z, and they may, they may walk. So now you've, you've got that, that foundation already there. So yeah, you'd have to apply that Mamba mentality to your, whatever you're studying and forget about the cert. Because to me, the cert is so, my, it's, it's a minor issue in this because it, a cert is only looking at a certain, uh, tasks uh, that are going to be specific towards that vendor's criteria. If you know the technology in and out, that cert is going to fit within that that technology. It's not the not the other way around. So, yeah, I think I think for me, work ethic in general is, I think it's key. I mean, if I look back and really look back at where my life started to change, it was when I started to look at the work and the amount of work that I put in, the amount of effort that I put into what I was doing. When I started to focus on work ethic, I just didn't know how to stop and I'm still doing it now, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm actually getting to a point. I mean, it's got me to where I am today and, and to this very day, I still I still carry on. So, you know, we I, I had this conversation with my, um, my fiance um, a few days ago, actually, because I work for Cisco and as you guys know, the, the, the role is quite demanding. You know, you're very busy on, on projects and with different customers um, day in, day out, uh, sometimes out of hours. And that should be enough for, for, for any normal individual. But for me, I've come from a, a background and an environment where it wasn't, it wasn't cool to be in school. Like I never wanted to be in school. I never wanted to learn. Education wasn't for me. It was, you know, 
start making money, get out of school, start making money. It's, it, it's not for me. And I didn't come from a bad upbringing. You know, my parents brought me up right, but that's the sort of environment I was in. And, you know, you know what they say, you're a product of your environment. And, and, and that's what I followed. So, you know, before I started to look at work ethic, that's what I was doing. When I started to look at work ethic and really put in the effort into what I wanted to do, my life started to change. And, you know, now that I'm, I'm doing a, a full-time role with Cisco. It's it, to this day still not enough for me. So you know, mid-year this year, um, I got a scholarship to study a master's degree. Um, I got I got awarded a scholarship. Um, so I'm now studying Congrats. a. Thank you. So I'm now studying a master's degree in, in cybersecurity, and that's a full-time master's degree, and I'm working full-time. And my fiance thought I was crazy um sometimes I think I'm crazy for doing it but I think it's the work ethic you know I I, I said I remember when I got awarded the scholarship and, and it all got real and I actually sat down and thought how am I going to work full-time do a master's degree in cyber security manage a family and with a young little baby how am I going to do all this and you know and aside from that, studying for my CCI security, you know, my plan is to take my lab next year. So it, it's a lot. And the response I gave to my fiance was, don't worry, I'll do it. And I think that comes from my work ethic. You know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be a failure. I don't want to be seen as a failure, considered, you know, considered a failure. And all I want to do is succeed. The more I the more the more success I see in, in myself and, and from what I'm doing, the more I want. So I just continue, continue, continue. And I'm actually getting to a point now where I'm actually thinking, am I, am I really, is my work ethic too much? Should, should I really be taking a step back and, and looking at the family a little bit more? Because, you know, Antonio touched on it a little bit earlier and, and he talked about the minimalism and, it's something that I was thinking about, you know, this, this year has been so crazy. You know, we've had the COVID, we've had, the, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement. We've had a lot of, a lot going on in, in the world. And um, it's got to this point in the year now, we've got a new house and we've not stopped all the way up until Christmas. And I'm reflecting and thinking, wow, you know, I've not really spent that much time with, my family as much as I wanted to because I've just been grinding I've just been doing me just been trying to you know trying to learn as much as I can and and, and trying to get to the next level you know whether that's getting a master's degree getting a promotion at work whatever it may be certification I've just been grinding and I've got to a point now where I'm like next year I, there's things I want to achieve but I'm I'm going to put a stronger emphasis on spending more time with my family because one thing I've realized with this COVID and all this lockdown business is, you know, it can all be taken away from you so quick. Yeah. And the only thing that is going to be there in the end is your family. Yeah. You know, and I said to my fiance, I said, next year, I'm going to work and that's it. I mean, once I've done what I need to do, I'm going to work and then that's it. The rest of the time is, is, is family time. You know, and that don't mean my work ethic's gone. It just means that sometimes you need to look at how much you're putting in and realize that it's not always just about that. You know, the, you know, your work ethic, you, your work ethic don't necessarily go because you're not doing much. And that's what I used to think. I always used to think because I'm only working, I need to be doing something else. I've got a spare five hours in a day. What can I get into that five hours? Now I'm thinking, now I've got a spare five hours. Let me spend it with, with loved ones. Let me do some fun. Let me enjoy life. You know what I mean? So that, that's the sort of thing that I'm looking at. But that doesn't mean my work ethic is not going to be there still. Man, I, I think so, it's not about how much time you have, but what you do with the time you do have. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. That's um, when I think about that question, the one, uh, you know, everyone knows I'm no longer, you know, hands on with uh, uh, in technology anymore. I, I lead a team of highly efficient and capable engineers now. Uh, but the Mamba mentality, though, how it has helped me, if you think about Kobe Bryant's life, uh, this man won five championships in his day job. Then he took the same mentality 
into his life afterward and became, as Erica said, an ambassador for the WNBA, but he also created an academy. Uh, he also won an Oscar and an Emmy awesome. yeah. uh, in a short a time, time period from yeah. retirement. Yeah. So for me, uh, I take the mentality of, uh, you know, I think about one word and, and uh, Kelvin touched on that and that's excellence. Mm -hmm. And that is everything that I do, I do it with excellence. Dewan, you and I talk a lot and, you know, I, I'll, I'll utilize my personal belief. I am a, a believer in Christ. And there's a scripture that says, do all things as, as unto the Lord. So everything that I do, I try to do from an excellent standpoint of saying, okay, does this please uh, my father? If it pleases him, then so be it. It's great, you know, regardless of what the world around me may see it as, that's my ultimate goal. And, and that's what I do every day now. Uh, when I lead the team that I lead, am I leading them with excellence? Can they look at me and say, this is a leader that I don't want to be without? Uh, my family, my children, uh, you know, my, my friends, do you guys look at me and say, yo, Tone is adding value to my life. And I know that when I reach out to him or he reaches out to me, it's solid. And that's the thing, you know, that I, that I focus on now. Uh, and I try to do it with that same spirit of excellence that, you know, like I said, you can call it Mamba mentality or you can just call it a spirit of excellence, but that's, that's where I'm at with it. Here's, here's a question. Um, we're talking about planning 2021, right? When you look around the industry, you got the cloud, you have security, you have network automation, you have coding, you have, you name it. There's a certification for it. There's somebody talking about you should be doing this. How do you plan your 2021 or your your tech career in general with so many dis distractions the goal of this question is to help guide people to make the right decisions on how to attack 2021 in a focused um, direction i would say the first thing everyone needs to do is write it down. Force yourself to become yes. accountable to you and then get an accountability partner that is genuinely wanting to see you win and see the best in you and share those goals with them. But first and foremost, write it down. Mm -hmm. Hey, you, you know how I feel about that, right? A, a goal unwritten Absolutely. is just a thought. <laughs> Yeah. Wish. Then, you know it's a it's wish, a wish. It's a hope. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and when you're writing it down make it very specific yeah uh make it you know don't don't believe that you don't believe that you, you can't have what you want you have to believe and know that you can have exactly what you want uh -huh. write it down if write you it want down. your ccie write down i will not i want to be Right now, I am going to be a CCIE by and put a date to it. When I was studying for mine, I, everyone knows I did collaboration. I had phones. On, I changed the background on every phone in my lab and said, I will be a CCIE on October 15, 2015. I didn't pass it on October 15, 2015, but I did pass it a month later, November 17, 2015. But I had that written down. Write that, write that down. I did the same. I mean, I, I remember I, I wrote down on my whiteboard, I will be CCIE number 4,500, right? Uh, 45,000. Now my CCIE number is 45950. And, and I actually was in that 45,000 range. I just wrote it down at the beginning of year uh, 2013. And in 2014 is when I got my CCIE number. So it's just, you write it down. Doesn't have to, I mean, it's just something like, it's like, that's your North Star. Mm -hmm. That's where you're going. That, that's your North Star. When you yeah. write it down, you actually give it life. Yeah. Yes. And anything that, uh, anything that has life lives until it's killed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. don't kill your own dreams. Write it down, man. Right. Or partner down. with someone that believes in you and that yeah. that's going to help hold you accountable. Yeah. 
I think I think that's the main word, accountability. You know, whether it's somebody else holding you accountable to to your own goals or yourself just taking that responsibility and being accountable. I think that's that's the key word and I I, I think that's the main message because I, I never, before I got into this industry, I never used to write goals down. I used to speak about the things that I wanted to do. And then, you know, by the, the, the next the next year, mid-year, I, you know, I forgot everything I wanted to do yeah. or, or things changed, you know, and I never held myself accountable. It was just like, yeah, well, whatever. Yeah, I can't remember. Let's, let's move on to the next thing. And every single year now since i got into this industry well even before i got into the industry actually when i was studying my uh, studying for my undergraduate uh, degree in in computer networks and, and system support um i started to write down um, goals on a yearly basis um so i do long-term goals every single year so at the end of every year i'll mm-hmm. write down long-term goals I'll write down uh, six monthly goals and I'll write down if there's any weekly goals, uh, which are a little bit sometimes more difficult to, to try and stick to. Um, and every single year now, without fail, I've religiously been doing just that. So I'm due to do the same thing again uh, before the new year for the, for the coming year, 2021. Um, and what I do is I, the way I hold myself accountable um, is one, I know what I've put on, uh, you know, I know what I've wrote down. Uh, that that goals list is printed out so you know i can see that goals list whenever i want it's on my computer safe so i can see it whenever i want um and, and two i review i review the, the 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 year that i've just been through and actually i've got a section where it shows uh where i can put a tick box uh, a tick mark whether i've achieved that goal and if i've not achieved that goal i can either move it to the next year or put you know why I've not achieved it or slightly modify it if things have changed or circumstances have changed so that's the way I hold myself accountable so that I know in the next coming days when I look at the goals that I set for this year I know I'm going to well I I already know I've achieved quite a few of those so mine was you know things like buy buy an house with my fiance done that you know pass my CCIE written done that so you know things like I'm holding myself accountable because it's always in my head it's always in my head. And I know that when I come back to revisit that form, you know, I better have some tick marks in there because if I don't, then I've not been following what I'm religiously <laughs> trying to preach. You know, I'm trying to preach. So to me, I think accountability is key. If there's no accountability, then you can fall off so easy mm-hmm. because things happen in life. You know, you've got your personal circumstances, you've got work, you know, and, and the situation today with, with COVID, there's so much unpredictability, you know, so it's so easy to forget about what you set out to do for that year. And I think you really need to keep yourself accountable to stay on track and achieve what it is that you've set out to achieve. That's, that's great. And I would say number two, go ahead and know your strengths and weaknesses uh, and write them down to write with you. When it comes to getting a technical certification, you're not going to know everything. Uh, You're going to know some things better than other things. So know what your strengths and your weaknesses are, and then focus on uh, creating a level playing field for yourself uh, in that. So yeah. with the strength, I love that that, um, that you mentioned strengths and weaknesses. The Myers-Briggs test is a good test. A good, as, yes, good test. As long yeah. with, as long as, along with the book Strength Finder, that's a um, pretty good book that gives you a bunch of, scenarios and questions and answers to help you find your strengths and weaknesses because I think some people may struggle to find those or to know what those are how would you go about determining what your strengths and weaknesses are uh for me that was always a a, a easy measurement because there were certain things that you know that you're good at that you you know that you thrive in that you feel inspired by and motivated in and then those there's the areas that you kind of like i don't really want to mess with that so for me it was there there's a level of comfortability in saying okay i'm I'm, i like this because i know it i stay away from this because uh, i don't know as well as i know this so that was a good you know a good starting point for me for myself, what I normally do is I actually do a, um, a heat map. And th- I, this was taught to me by my, my mentor. Uh, it's going to be, you know, really identify exactly what your strengths are. 
Um, for me, it's the, you know, analytical stuff. I, I, I love to go out, research, find things. The other part that I struggle with uh, is the, you know, presentation of it. Sometimes I deliver a message and it falls as, you know, about as it, it floats like a lead balloon sometimes. It's like a, it's a delivery, you know, it's how you deliver your information. So you have to be very honest with your, you know, with yourself and do a, a, a key assessment. Uh, but it's, it's creating a heat map. And once you do that and put it out on paper, then you see, okay, well, I don't need to necessarily, you know, reinforce researching and, and, and looking up information. I already got that, you know, but if, if I need to work on my presentation skills and whatnot, now that's where I've got to, you know, you know, singularly focus and put my, a lot more time and effort to it. So that's what, that's what's helped me out a lot is a, a heat map. And you don't have to go out and, and, you know, buy a book to do it. You can just, you know, list all of your strengths and weaknesses on paper, put it down. And, and I think that'll help you out a lot. Yeah, and please be honest with yourself about it too. Like, don't don't shortcut yourself. Don't shortchange nope. yourself. Be honest with what you are strong in, what you are weak in, especially what you're weak in. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, no, no, it's fine. I, I no, I, I was just gonna say I agree with you know yourself and and Eric and what you're saying there. You know, almost like a SWOT analysis. You yep. know, on yourself, identify your strengths and your weaknesses, and and as Antonio just said there, you know, I want to put a, a bigger emphasis on that in that. The, the weaknesses are very important because that's the only way you grow. You know, if you're always putting down your strengths, then you're not going to get very far because you've got nothing to improve on. You need to be, you know, you need to be really honest with yourself and really look at what you're weak in. So if, say for instance, if we're talking tech and there's a protocol, let's say that you, you're unfamiliar with, um, you know, that's a weakness, you know, don't just shy away from it, get that down and make sure that you focus on that so that, that it becomes your, your, your strength and not, not your weakness. You know, the, the weaknesses uh, are, the, are the ones that get you further on in life than your strengths because once your strengths are mastered, they're there. It's the weaknesses that you don't know that put barriers on how far you can go. So if you work on your weaknesses, um, you, you won't struggle going far. I like that idea. I like I like that idea. So, before we go to um, the next tip, I got a question about that though. Applying that to your tech career, right? Should you focus on your strengths? Let's say you're really strong in routing and switching. Should you focus on that, or should you deviate and focus on security or network automation? I think huh. you you know I have some very strong feelings about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what you gonna say collaborations <laughs> i'm going to say something that i've been saying for years the reason i got into collaboration was because i saw that i'm a raw switch guy by trade yeah. that's what my background is so why did someone that was proficient in route and switch switch to something totally unknown for him because i had the foresight to see that anything that can be automated and systematized and handled in that way could put me out of a job. Correct. So Correct. my advice is technology changes as fast as it does. Mm -hmm. And you may be comfortable where you are and doing what you're doing, but if you can't see where the change is going and have no thoughts or plans to change with it, the technology is going to change with or without you. You don't want it to change without you. <laughs> right. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's just big facts right there. I mean, I was a route switch candidate as well. And if you look at how everything now has started to pivot and change, I mean, there's a, a dynamic change going on right now in the industry and you got to pay attention to it. The stuff that we were doing for routing and switching, let's say five years ago, so we're looking at 2015, all of that now has been what? Automated, automated. Then nobody's going to sit there and plug up a, a was it a, you know, those uh, blue Cisco cables and let me, let me do a USB to serial cable and plug into it. Yeah, console. <laughs> nobody trying to do all that. <laughs> they still it's ship like, what? They still ship them now. I got one. <laughs> wow, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have hey. to throw mine away. <laughs> you got one? Shoot, put that thing up on eBay, man. You need like $1,000 for that thing. <laughs> 
They're automating it. I just got yeah. a new switch. They're, they're, oh, they're, they're, man. Look at that. He's trying to stunt. <laughs> but look where it is. It's still in the plastic. 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 Yo, but that's an interesting point. Um, we really are in a time where networking is going to drastically change. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people make this statement when you talk about learning network automation, uh, you need to understand what you're automating. And I, for the life of me, agree that you need to understand networks but since i've actually automated networks in production that's not necessarily true from a coding standpoint because a lot of times you're going to have to automate something you have no idea what you're automating and the only way you're yeah. going to do it is by testing in production and learning that technology for example i was tasked to build an application for fi Knew nothing about F5, but through learning the API, I control API, and learning that, I started to learn F5. And then from that, along with that, when you're dealing with APIs, you're dealing with structured data. So you either can send this data or you can't send the data. And in production, you're not going to implement this without knowing if it works you're going to test it but even if you test it and you understand the technology 100 percent and you put it in production sometimes it doesn't go as planned yeah. so i don't care how much you understand networking all you can do is really test 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 as much as possible but there's going to get a point where more and more networking tools are going to be plug and play and they're going to be automatically discovered and mm. the configuration is going to be pushed out from something like NSO and you're not going to have to touch that router or switch because it's automatically configured and controller driven like the industry is going to change it's happening now and what I don't want to see is people focused on things that may not be relevant five years from now yeah yeah, I, I I agree. Um, I I I think I think coming from the way I got into IT and Cisco and networking, I think there's the more you know, the better, of course. And I understand what Dewan's saying in that some things are just not worth learning if you're looking at going down that route the automation route and, and the industry is changing you know you, you can see the shifting companies you can see the shifting companies like cisco you know which were predominantly routers and switches you know we're now looking at cloud and network and automation uh, elements so you know it, it, there's no doubt about it. it is changing but i think as long as you know as much as you need to know then you'll be okay because the last thing you want to do is to be comfortable with automating something and i don't know let's say for instance you, you've tested and it's all fine but then you roll it out into production like you say uh duan and then you know you realize you've got a a, a wrong bgp statement you know you're gonna be you're gonna find yourself looking for a new job before you know it so <laughs> right don't, don't just take the approach of yes let's just automate it and you know we don't need to know anything sort of thing um you know if you have the opportunity to to learn make sure you learn because it's going to put you in a better position whether that's be you know be for the current position you're doing or for you know the, the future and on other positions that you're looking for especially if you get um sacked for taking down a network <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say i'm gonna say like this real quick Dewan. sorry um Stop the limiting beliefs. Yes. Don't get caught up in, well, I can't do this because I don't know that. Uh, just make a decision and to go start. Yeah. If you don't know something, make a decision to pick that up along the way or whatever. But don't sit back and say, well, I can't learn automation because I don't know networking. Or don't sit back and say, well, I'm, uh, you know, because of this, that. No, 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 no. That's limiting beliefs that will cause you to create excuses, which will cause you to stay stagnant. If it's about growth, then let's go ahead and be honest and be real and say, you know what? 
F it. I'm going to start here yeah. and go there. Yeah. That's just how I see it. Um, and if you got to pick it up on the along the way, fine. Uh-huh. You know, just know where to go get the information. But you got to yeah. start. You got to start somewhere. The, you have to. The question sometimes I, it's not about that, that's it. I mean, sometimes it's not about <laughs> having to know, you know, for instance, the wines case, everything about F5. You only need to know a subset of what you're doing to complete the job that you're doing. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it's, that's when that, that's where it goes back to me saying, you know, don't spend the time and effort in areas that you're not going to to benefit from you personally you know if your job only requires you to to learn a certain element then learn the element and as as antonio said if you for instance find that you like that particular area pick that up as well you know so you as antonio said you're going from a and you want to get over there so you know you can pick up that extra element and add it over there i will say this though I think the best hackers are the ones that understand computing. I think the best coders are the ones that understand computing. So from fundamentally, I would assume that the ones that automate the best will be the ones that understand networking. So I will, I will say that, but I think like, if you look at the DevNet cert and it's 20% networking, you know, because yeah. you're more focused on, um, learning those APIs and learning how to code Uh, in the journey, learning networking will be built in. I mean, it's just a part of you learning and testing and getting your code peer review, because if you're doing DevOps and you're actually as a new network engineer, you're not going to be in there automating right away. And if you do good luck with that, because if you don't know what you're doing, like, somebody said yeah. it's a career limiting um decision so right. make sure you're getting your code tested peer reviewed approved before you roll it out into production but either way on that journey you're going to inherently learn more and more and more about networking so in, anyway moving right along the next question i have is about distractions i know kelvin said he had to go but uh, and hit him on Twitter. He said he got a little bit more time. Everybody else good on time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm good on time. Okay. Now, since we are writing down our goals, we're understanding our strengths and weaknesses. Now, how do you have laser focused on your goal? <laughs> you have to know why you're doing it. You, you, Your why has to be ever present. Uh why are you focusing on that particular goal? And if your why is big enough, then you won't get distracted. When distractions come though, because they will come to test oh, yeah. you. Yeah. Distractions are going to come to see if you really bought that life. Uh, and if you're really bought that life, the key is what do you do when those distractions come? Uh, so I would say the first thing you need to do is recognize what a distraction for you is, because what may be distracting to Dewan may not be distracting to Antonio. So understand what your distractions are, and then try to uh, try to mitigate those as as much as possible. The key is get uh, again. Don't set yourself up for failure. Mm-hmm. Go into your cert journey setting yourself up for success, and and part of that again goes back to being real, going back to being honest. You have to be honest with why you're doing this. You have to be honest with what are those potential distractions and when they come up ask yourself this question is this benefiting me from reaching my goal and if it's no if you're being honest and that answer is no then why the hell are you doing it cut it cut it short cut it short don't even waste no time with it don't waste no time i think distractions i think antonio you said it right i mean you you need to know why you're doing what you're doing you need to know the goal that you've set is really a goal that you want to achieve, uh, whether that's personal or professional, and you need to be motivated. Because if you, it, yeah, I mean, if if you're not, if there's no motivation there, it doesn't matter what distractions are in your life. You're just not going to do it, yeah. you know, because distractions will come from your phone, from YouTube, from the people around you. You're just not going to do it because you don't understand really the benefit of what it is that you want to do and and, and achieve. So. I think for me, you really need to be 
true to yourself with the goals that you set. Because if you're not, it doesn't matter what distraction might come around. It's so easy to, to, to be thrown off, off track. I've been there where I've, I've said that I'm going to, to work towards something with uh, what I thought was a realistic timeline. And that's another thing, realistic timelines. You can't come into this industry and tell me you want to achieve your CCIE next year you know, without, you know, with, with no prior background, you know, I'm not saying it can't, I can't, I'm not saying it can't be done. You know, there's some clever people out there, but you know, you need to be real with yourself and you need to really set realistic timelines because the chances of that person knowing what it really takes to get a CCIE, you know, there wouldn't be, if, if they knew what it really took to, to, to get a CCIE, they really wouldn't be setting a timeline for, for, for the, for the start of next year or, you know, mid next year. So I think being real with the time is, is, is another one, you know, because I've been there, I've set, I've set times and I've tried to use tools to stop my distractions uh, and, and procrastination. Uh, and if you really, if you don't really have your head in it, it doesn't matter, it's not gonna work. Honestly, it's not gonna work. You know, I've set timers, I've given myself 10 minutes breaks before I jump back into work. If you're not, if you don't want to do it, you're not going to do it. I've, I've, the time has run out after 10 minutes. I've still been sat there 20 minutes later doing something else. Do you know what I mean? Because I've not, I've not really, my, my head's really not been in it, but then it becomes, it gets to a point where you might start to understand that the goal you set yeah. is really something that you want to achieve. And then you really start to work at it. And then you really you know, the distractions around you, you will minimize those distractions by making time for the goals that you want to achieve. Whether that's setting time aside to focus on them goals, whether that's turning off your phone, turning off YouTube or the television or, or being in your own space. If you really want to achieve that goal, you'll wipe your distractions out, no problem. That, that's yeah, that is so very true. But what you both are describing is really discipline. Because there's, you're, you're yeah. I mean, it's not really motivation. It's not, it's discipline. It's, I remember when I was studying for my CCIE and I, I let my husband know, I was like, look, you know, I'm going to do my work at the job. And when I get done, you know, I'll come home, we'll have dinner together. But then at a certain time, I'm studying and you have to be disciplined. And what I did was I would build in time to where it, it was kind of like, I, you know, if I wanted to lounge around for a couple of days, that was okay. I was okay with that. You know, cause it was just your body needs a break, your mind needs a break. But to go like, a, nobody's a machine. I mean, I, I've seen it where people try to build this unrealistic, uh, uh, you know, schedule together and they don't have the, di they don't have the discipline together. They don't have the, you know, things organized. So when you start the, your studying journey it's in chaos. It's in shambles. Mm, yeah. And so you, you got to be able to be disciplined enough to, to do a hard assessment and say, okay, is this, you know, is this organized? Do I have everything surrounding, you know, like my family on board with me studying, you know, do I have a newborn where I've got to take care of? Well, maybe my right now might not be, you know, might, might not be the best time to study. So you got to really do a hard assessment of that. But once you get started with it, all that other extra stuff, if it's not going to be benefiting you on your task and your plan, cut it short. That's what this year taught me more than anything else. I mean, I had it, but the discipline now, I'm just like laser focused on what I got to get done. Um, and I've, I've been starting that as of October of this year. Um, and it's just going to you know, carry over into next year. So I, I think, you all said some some really great points. Um, Antonio mentioned understanding your why, like why you're doing it, mm -hmm. um, writing down your goals, and I, you also mentioned something, but you you all didn't directly state it, and that's a routine. Um, mm -hmm. Antonio also mentioned you know that minimalist, and Kelvin also eliminating those distractions, and Erica mentioned it as well. Being disciplined having a routine, sticking to that routine because motivation will fail you. Like you will not be motivated. Like life will happen. Yeah. 
Yep. And when it does happen, the more you stick to your routine, Charles DeWig has a book called The Power of the Habit, and it talks about the subconscious mind and how, let's say, when someone has Alzheimer's and they do things every day the same way because they formed that habit for doing it years at a time and subconsciously, even when they're mentally not there, they're subconsciously still able to perform the same acts daily. And so when it comes to me and my goals, I do my best to keep that routine to where I don't even have to think about it. If I'm going to work on a certification, okay, I'm going to put all my exam topics in one note. I'm going to find whatever course I'm going to go to, and I'm going to do at least, let's say, my boy Chris Woods got a saying, five minutes a day. Because that five minutes a day, at least you did that. And at least you're dedicated and disciplined to that. So what I try to do is I set a time aside at a certain time every day and I let my family know. And that's my routine that I try to stick with. So. I know. It's, a, it's, it's, the, it's the Kobe routine. Mamba mentality. 400 shots a day, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 400 shots. I love that. I know Kelvin said he got like 10 more minutes. Um, is there another another um, item you all want to add to this list? I'm going to take a couple questions before we out. No, I think it'd be a good idea to take the questions. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've got a lot of questions, a lot of questions coming through. Um, <laughs> what we so do. Yeah. If we, if we don't get to them all, you know, post them in the comments afterwards on the video and, and we'll, we'll do our best to answer them. Yeah, and follow Kelvin, Antonio, and Erica on Twitter. Kelvin has a YouTube channel. Make sure you follow him. His yeah. information is very on point. His yes. consulting skills is um, top notch. <laughs> <laughs> and he yeah, presents they that are. in his blog posts, <laughs> his YouTube channel, all that. <laughs> so, Yes, they are. All right. So what's the first question? I'm looking for one. You all see one? Uh, yeah. I'm a C- This is for from Mercadon. Please forgive me if I misspelled it. I mean, if I mispronounced it. I'm a CCNP route switch enterprise. Should I pursue CCIE enterprise? Is CCIE still worth it? Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> still. Um, well, yeah. why get the CCNP and stop there? Uh, yeah. People that are looking for CC- CCIE enterprises will be looking for you. Uh, yes. Don't don't get caught up in the noise. Yeah. Don't yeah, and I yourself. think just, just to touch on that, I think the you know the new certification tracks. There's a lot of relevant new content in there. So you know we've got things like if you're looking at enterprise, I've not looked at it in detail, but you have got things like SD access. Uh, so SDA, you've got SD one. Um, all those technologies, they they're quite big out there now. So. You know, as Antonio said, why stop uh, CCMP Enterprise? Finish the journey. True story. True story. Take it to the top and you'll set yourself apart. It's worth it. Mm -hmm. Gary Walker asks, I failed my CCNA. How do I pass my second attempt? I just replied in the comments. uh, Look at the score report. Where did you struggle at the most? Go tighten that up. Go tighten Mm -hmm. that up. Yeah. Um, and don't beat yourself up. You know, um, it's easy to get down on the certification, but mm-hmm. it happens. I failed multiple certifications. Antonio failed his CCIE multiple times. Um, mm-hmm. Don't get down on yourself. Yeah, I mean, I spoke about it at the start of this call. You know, I failed the the old version of the CCIE security um, written multiple times, um, and my confidence was knocked, and that's not an easy thing to do. So... I think, as the one said, just don't give up and continue to focus on what it is that you're doing. Yep. Um, thank you to Twin Cities, Taz, and others that have given a super chat. I wanted to see if they had a question. Twin Cities, do you have a question? Looks like Sugar Sugar's Skull Life has a question. Thank you for the super chat. What does the future of Cisco security look like, Kelvin? Um, Cisco has the score now with specialties, and Cisco also has the um, Cisco cyber ops professional. You want to speak on that, Kelvin? Yeah, sure. So the cyber ops um, certifications, they're more focused uh, towards like um, network operation centers or, you know, um, 
environments like that. I've not really looked in depth at the certifications and nor have I taken any of the certifications because I don't believe it's in line with what I'm doing or what I want to do. Uh, the new CCIE or C uh, Cisco security um, training, you, you're right with the specialities. There, it's similar to the to the last version. Um, it's just that it's called specialities now. So you still have, you know, VPN, you've got ICE, so identity, uh, services engine, you've got the firepower content. Um, it's just called specialities now. So you can choose to certify uh, under each of those, those domains. Whereas before the old CCMP, uh, you would have to pass, uh, I think at the, the old one was four certifications before you get the full CCMP uh, security. Um, the future of Cisco security, um, in my opinion, is is very strong uh, right now. We have some uh, good products out there, um, some products that uh, a lot of companies can't compete with at the moment. Uh, we've got, you know, the identity services engine, so yeah. uh, the basically AAA server. It's a really good, uh, really good product. We've got the Firepower products. Uh, we've also got the the ESA WSA. We've also got some cloud uh, products now. Uh, we've got Cisco Umbrella, which is a very uh, powerful um, mm -hmm. product. Um, so I think my view, I mean, obviously I'm biased. I work for Cisco and you know, security is my domain, but uh, really and truly, I think we've got a good product portfolio at the moment. And I think the way that Cisco has um, enabled the ability to integrate uh, pretty much all the the products into another it really helps companies out there that are looking for uh solutions with the same company and not with you know taking out a a, a web security appliance uh with another company and then coming to cisco for a firewall you can keep it all with one company all with one vendor uh, get the same support from the same vendor and you can integrate the solutions together so for me i think it's um i think we've got a good strong portfolio at the moment cool <clears throat> um thanks for that man i saw a question or it was actually more of a statement and it was from i believe it was mateos roy mateos and he said that or yeah learning automation and networking at the same time would confuse be too steep for a beginning starting out i want to kind of address that so if you look at the ccna right now 20% of that is network automation. If you look at the CCNA DevNet certification, 20% um, of that is networking. So when you think about it, automation is going to be a part of your journey regardless if you're ready for it or not. And when you talk about automation, it's not necessarily learning Python. That's a tool. Ansible is a tool. It's another way of configuring devices is another way of managing your infrastructure that they're, they're just tools what i would do is remove the fear and embrace the journey to be totally right. honest with you um automation isn't here to make your job harder or make your journey harder it's actually just to help you grow and improve productivity you know like will people lose jobs i don't know well, people gain jobs, yes. There's going to be new jobs in network oh, yeah. automation. That's the key. Yeah. We don't know if people are going to lose jobs, but there will be new jobs. And I'm mm -hmm. of the mindset where I want to um, have my current. skills stay current and stand out. So if you want to mm -hmm. stand out, join the new wave. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the way I look mm -hmm. at it. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the I think one of the things as well to touch on is that regardless of which journey you take and i think dewan touched on this you know the the automation side is is you're seeing it embedded in a lot more technologies now so whether it you know whether you want to learn security or collaboration or data center you know you're going to start to see automation elements within each of those so regardless of whether you want to learn it or don't think you can do it you're probably doing it already and you don't even know yeah, and, sure. and um, Roy, I wasn't attacking you or nothing. I just don't want to discourage anybody from or limit anybody's mindset on what they can accomplish. That right. That's the whole point of addressing that question because I think oftentimes people will tell you not to do something when you may be the person that can do that and more. So 
Uh, embrace the journey. Yeah. Embrace the journey is, is, is real, is really key. And, you know, remember this, if you think you can, you're right. If you think you can't, you're also you're right. 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 <laughs> There's power in positive thinking. Matter That's of fact, right. go read the book, The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. Hey, th- is that one of your book recommendations? It is. Yeah, that's in the description as well. Um, I might have to send you mine because there's a couple of them I want to add to the list. Cool. So uh-huh. I, I put everybody's contact information in the description of this video, along with some book recommendations to help you um, go into your 2020 with a great mindset and, a, and improve your plan. I thank you all for joining us. Um, I hope you found this live stream to be helpful and informal and um yeah informal and informational i should say and i also want to thank kelvin erica and antonio for coming on i really appreciate your your mindset and you all taking the time for doing this i'm gonna let you all take us out thank you i just want to say thank you yeah duan for for setting this up and you know keeping us all together uh, Erica, thank you as always. You know, inspiring uh, lady right there, especially to the to the women in the community as well, and those Appreciate that are trying the comfort as well. And Antonio, as I've said it always before, and in the chat, you know, the the wisdom and the knowledge that you you mm-hmm. give out to the community, and you know, again, taking your time out just as as everybody else does. You know, thank you because. You know, these are sort of things that I didn't have when when I was starting, and I think mm-hmm. it would have made my journey a lot easier at the start if if I did see uh, things like this happening. So I just want to thank everybody for for keeping this going, and thank you to the to the community that we've got and those that are tuning in um, one day after Christmas when I'm sure they've got families to be with as well. Yeah, yeah thanks. Um, for me, first of all, uh, thank you, Kelvin. Those words are very kind and appreciated. You're definitely one of the genuine, most genuine humans I've ever met. Erica, again, I said it in the chat. Uh, I'm gonna give you your roses while we're on this uh, on this platform. Uh, what what you do to break down the barriers for not just women, but especially African American women. That's you know uh, that's something to be admired and to be celebrated. So I salute you, my sister. I love you, uh, Kelvin. I love you, Juan. What more can I say, man? You know, you're, you're one of the best human beings that God has ever created. And I'm thankful for you. Yeah. Thankful that you allow me to just share a, a, a minor, you know, bit of who I am here on your platform. So thank you guys. Uh, everyone on here, if you're not following us, follow us. Uh, share, like, subscribe to Kelvin's channel, subscribe to Dewan's channel. Uh, read the books that these are the books that we are either reading or have read and that we live by. So you'll always have a piece of us uh, and the knowledge that we have, you'll be able to have for yourself. My goal has always been to teach you how to fish instead of giving you a fish. I don't want to feed you for a day. I want to feed you. I want to feed you and your family for generations to come. Uh, you know, like Kelvin said, if this would have been around, I'm an OG in the game. I've been in this game almost 30 years. It's been 26 years for me. So had I had this 26 years ago, who knows? Uh, but you know, I'm I'm blessed to be able to be here to be able to drop the gems for you guys. And no, Sammers, I don't have a YouTube channel. Maybe I should make one. You can follow me on uh, on Twitter and LinkedIn. Uh, it's in the uh, description of this video. Yeah, uh, everybody keeps asking me, am I going to get my YouTube channel? I don't know. I got too much stuff to do. <laughs> I don't mind coming on yours and, and Kelvin, so that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Kelvin. I really appreciate you guys. Um, you just been phenomenal. I, I remember when I reached out to you and you didn't even bat an eye. You just said, hey, let me help you out. And just you've always been uh, such a blessing. Uh, but everybody, our, our squad has always been uh, a blessing for me. And it's just been uh, very appreciative. Um, just, you know, just going through some of the stuff I went through this year you guys have always been there. No questions I asked. It's not. And even Kelvin, you've been overseas and you're still helping out. So I really appreciate that. Antonio. Wow, man. I love you all. I mean, you guys, you've been like my brothers here, my you know, extended family. So, but uh, Antonio, you've just been uh, just a, a, a breath of fresh air. 
working with you on that, you know, on, on some of the initiatives that we've got internally, uh, been just phenomenal help. So I really appreciate it. And then Dewan, hey, you've been an inspiration to the community. I mean, you set this whole thing up, we lab every day. I know people try to, you know, take your hashtag, but I mean, like, ah. yeah, you, you, you know, I, and I understand that. I mean, you've been a community, but just an inspiration to everybody. And I really appreciate that because you don't see this. You don't see people of color, black people getting out there, trying to help one another and help the community. And it does, it's, it's done, um, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, where your starting point is. You come on in. Uh, we're a welcoming community. We, we, you know, if you ask your questions, we'll do our best to answer them uh, as best we can or point you in the right direction to get the answer. So, uh, but I mean, you guys are just like family for me. I mean, if you come to DC, reach out. You always got a, a place to stay with me. So always. So turn out. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming Much to love. visit soon. I'm coming. Absolutely. Don't go to Florida. Come on up to DC. <laughs> Florida. Best in Florida. And real quick, someone said that uh, Dewan needs his own official day. I agree. We're going to start that movement. Thanks for saying that. Get the blame. I'm going to go back and find out when the lab every day actually be born. And that's going to be the official lab every day day. There you go. Celebrate this man. <laughs> this man, his flowers, nah, why man. he's alive. He's changing lives. Give him his flowers. Oh, yes. 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 It's not about me, though. It ain't even about man, me. Man, whatever, man. No, for real. Don't, 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 don't start that. Don't right. start that. Don't start that. Don't start that. You right. can't stop us from celebrating you, bro. Hey, Kelvin, uh, let me say this much. Kelvin, you need to get all of us on your channel. Hello. And, and so yes. we can you know, return the favor. Because you and you need to go live with your stuff, too. So it's like, come on. We we help each other out, man. True we say. family. We family. Definitely. Definitely. I'll try to set someone up. But I just let you know, we all as long as we all come together, that's all that, you know, that's all that matters to me. You know, I think. As long as they communicate, get the knowledge that they need, that's yeah. all that matters to me. Yeah. So, but yeah, man, wh whatever yeah. we could do, any channel, it don't matter to me. Man, I appreciate y'all. Um, yeah, we need to do something like consistently. I know Kelvin's working on his masters, and I don't want to put more on his plate or none of y'all plate. But we'll talk. We'll talk offline, and we'll figure this out. Um, I thank y'all for tuning in. Shout out to the moderators, Get the Lane, yeah, Tiffany. Thank you. Um, Taz, Christian, let's see. Um, my cousin Dale, I saw you in there. Appreciate all of you for the hard work you're doing in the chat, and we thank you all for tuning in. <clears throat> and I just want to, just before we finish, I just want to say, give a shout out to to Taz, um, because she's oh, yeah, joined Cisco. So, welcome to the team, yeah, yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. A hey, you get time. a chance to yeah, you get a chance to embrace the uh, the technology with the rest of us, man. It, it just come on to the uh, lab every day uh, thread or Kelvin's thread. Let's let's talk about it. Yeah. Welcome to the family. And yeah, welcome. Well, December twenty seventh, two thousand sixteen. Dewan uploaded his first video. <laughs> December twenty seventh. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow. That's lab every day. Day. That's, that's, <laughs> we gonna spam his Twitter, y'all. Listen, listen to me. Go spam his Twitter all day tomorrow. Tomorrow, December 27th. You're like laugh every, every day. day. What's up, man? Raise it, man. What's up? Four <laughs> years. Look at what this man has done in four years. Look at the lives he's changed yes, in man. four years. Oh, oh we going up. I might wow, start a YouTube man. channel tomorrow just for this. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> we'll be like, you, you didn't laugh man. every day. What's up, man? You oh, no, I'm bugging. The 26th. That's the day. That's the day. Oh no, it's it's, it's the twenty seventh. <laughs> <laughs> man, get it Yo, together, Kelvin, bro. Gotta go. Hey, we thank y'all for tuning in. This is twenty seventh, y'all tomorrow, Sunday. Get it together with the dates, 